Subsurface scattering is a property of certain materials that allows light to penetrate through them and emerge on the opposite side. A typical example is human skin, through which light passes and is tinted by the blood vessels present on the surface. And here we see another example of the same concept. In subsurface scattering, light enters the material and scatters in all directions before emerging on the opposite side. Here we see artistic representations that in a way encapsulate the concept. Here we see the representation of a beam of light entering the surface, dispersing in all directions and exiting from the opposite side. Firstly, we need to consider the color of the material since the light as it enters will take on that hue and we will then see it from the opposite side. Not only that, but the color of the light emanating from the material will also depend on the penetration capacity of each individual wavelength within the surface. As we know, each material allows individual wavelengths to penetrate differently. So, if a material allows the red wavelength to penetrate deeper into the surface, we will see predominantly red light. The same happens when the blue wavelength is able to penetrate the material more deeply. All these factors together determine the intensity and coloration of the subsar phase scattering. Let's apply these concepts in Blender now. We can create a simple object like a sphere and switch to shading mode. Here we are creating a new material, and as you can see in the main shader, we already have the ability to adjust the subsurface scattering. So, unless there are specific cases, we no longer need to manually add the subsurface scattering node. Let's consider the different parameters of this shader. Firstly, there is a parameter that determines the algorithm used to define how light passes through and scatters within the surface. In general, the random walk algorithm can be used except in the specific case of skin, where a variant called skin is employed. To understand how it works, let's reset the values to the default neutral values. I switch to rendering mode, and the best way to observe subsurface scattering is to position a light behind the object. As I was saying earlier, the first requirement for subsurface scattering to occur is that light can penetrate inside the object, and this is precisely what the radius parameter can define. This parameter defines how much each individual light component can penetrate into the material. And we have three components, red, green, and blue light. This determines how much each light component can penetrate the material. Weight is a multiplier that determines the intensity required for subsurface scattering. If we set the weight to a 1 and the individual light components cannot penetrate the surface, we see nothing. By increasing the radius through which each light component can penetrate, for example by setting it to 30, the object immediately appears to illuminate as the light can now enter inside the surface, spread, and exit from the opposite side. As I was saying earlier, the first factor that determines the shading of subsurface scattering is the color of the object itself. For example, by setting a slight hue, we notice that the subsurface scattering has the same color as the object and the material. If we reduce the weight or the radius of each component to zero, we observe that the scattering effect disappears. But as I was saying, the color of the light that passes through the other side depends not only on the object's color, but also on how much each individual light component can penetrate into the material. 
So we bring the material's heat back to a neutral value. Let's increase the range through which each light component can penetrate the surface. For example, the red component. This means that the red wavelength can penetrate into the surface, while the green and blue components cannot. As a result, the light outside the material itself will appear red, even though the material is of a neutral color. Of course, we can do the same thing by changing one of the other components. And it is clear that the way in which light and the different components of the wavelength penetrate the material directly affects its coloration. Furthermore, we can adjust the overall intensity of the subsurface scattering. Let's now return to the example of a red coloration. However, we have another parameter, the scale factor, which acts as a multiplier for the light penetration distance into the material. And this can be very useful if we want to achieve the same effect on objects of different sizes. Let's consider having three spheres with the same subsurface scattering properties, but of different sizes. The final outcome differs. For example, in the largest sphere, the intensity of subsurface scattering is much lower compared to the intermediate one and the smallest one. This depends on the fact that the ray through which the light enters each object is exactly the same. Obviously, with the same ray, the effect will be greater in the smaller sphere compared to the larger one. To achieve the same end result, we need to apply a different scale depending on the size of the objects. So, for the larger sphere, I apply a scale of about three times compared to that of the smallest object. As you can see, the end result is a coloration similar to those of the other two spheres. Therefore, for objects of different sizes, instead of proportionally adjusting the radius of each light component, we can maintain the proportions based on the desired color type and then adjust the scale according to the object's dimensions. Furthermore, we have another property, anisotropy, which is a physical concept that determines how a property changes depending on the direction. For example, in this case, the light interacts with the material depending on the direction. An isotropic material, meaning with this value set to zero, does not change its properties based on how light interacts with it. So, we have examined some properties of subsurface scattering. You can use these concepts to simulate some materials found in nature.